Hello and welcome to the Eurogamer Show. Just me this week, Eva's off fighting crime, Ian's having a nap, and Chris responded to my text saying lol soz banter. Not sure what that means, but I'm sure we'll muddle through. Coming up this week, The Witcher 3, probably the most cheerful game where it's possible to get eaten by a necrophage. And Farming Simulator. Not sure if there are necrophages in this one, but Ian knows, I think. Before all that though, we may as well have a look at what's been going on in the Brighton office and beyond this week. Seems only polite. Chris, can you hear me? No, no. I, this is all pre-recorded. Chris, can you hear me? So yes, this week has been largely about The Witcher 3. Again, hasn't it, really? And that's, I think that's all right. If you saw a review on Monday, you'll see that we gave it an essential, which means we like it lots and lots. And I chatted with Ollie about that review a couple of days ago now. And in his words, it's one of the best open world RPGs we've seen in years. So there's that. And in fact, we're about to add something kind of cool to that conversation. So you know Bertie, right? Bertie being the one that's into dragons. Uh, he's been out with CD Projekt over this week to kind of follow the launch and be on the ground as they released this big gigantic game of theirs. And there's going to be an interesting story there, I think, because CD Projekt weren't always the, uh, the giants that you may see them as today. And yeah, that will make for a really cool article in the near future. But I didn't quite want to wait, so I checked in with Bertie um, on Wednesday for a quick Skype chat just to see how he's getting along. And yeah, let's let's go and take a look at that, shall we? Are they looking after you over there? Have you been fed? I have been fed. Yeah, they've got a really nice canteen here actually. Oh. Where they do uh, they do lots of vegetarian stuff. Had some spinach and feta dumplings today. Pure <laughs> oggy. It's called it's Polish speciality. <laughs> Bertie, you have like you know followed the launch of The Witcher Three, Wild Hunt, and everything, right? You haven't just been sitting in the canteen. Yeah. So. Do they not get the day off to like you know watch the launch or whether or press like the button that launches the game? I don't know how game development actually works. Well, this is it. So last night I was here and um, I was waiting for that moment at, at midnight when um, they went. We were at, um, um, we went to a midnight launch in Warsaw and then we came back here um, and I was waiting for a moment when they would go yeah. <laughs> um, but it was suddenly I I turned around to Adam Badovsky and I was like oh so it's just Steam to launch now we were looking at the GOG uh, the good old games uh, stats the GOG stats mm -hmm. um, and he was like oh no uh, Steam's launched and I was like oh so like that's it that's everything um, and he was like yeah and uh, like allowed himself a brief smile <laughs> just the briefest so, smile oh. wasn't like the Polish Prime Minister in the office yesterday that's... just to say hello yeah so that was that was a strange moment. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Polish Prime Minister came yesterday, um, and so they had uh, security in here. I'm going to take these off so you can see me a bit better. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, they had the Secret Service people, some people that looked like they would beat the snot out of you if you said something, <laughs> they would take you down. Um, and the guy who's been sort of chaperoning me around was like, don't do anything stupid. And I was like, <laughs> he was like, they will kill you. It's like okay, no, I won't. Um, yeah, and yeah, and they were sweeping every room, and then there was this pack of photographers around them, um, following like clack 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 clack, look at every opportunity. And she seemed very um, entertained and curious about the whole thing. Um, you didn't do anything embarrassing, did you? No, I didn't actually. Yes. I found myself because um, I had this media badge on, and I'm obviously not a proper photographer like these guys, but I had my camera, and then I found myself sort of. Like, they were right in front of me, and I was like, where's all the other with the camera? I think I wasn't supposed to be where I was, and uh, so I was, like, right in the middle. Um, but she was, yeah, she kind of swept through the building and then and back out again, and then they presented her with um, <laughs> the game, and I and I said to uh, Martin Iwinski, uh, the co-founder of the studio, I was right. like, is she going to play it then? Like, joking, and uh, he was like, yeah, she said she would. Oh, all right. And he was like, but well, probably she might get someone else to play it. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's quite a long game. She might have to, it might take a little while. Uh, yeah, she'll, she'll only play it for the steamy parts, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and See, I would probably got killed yesterday. So. Yeah, if you you like, you would have just been murdered immediately. If Right, let's be honest here, Bertie. You're not just in Poland to, uh, to see the launch of The Witcher 3 and visit CD Projekt. What else are you doing in Poland whilst you're there? I'm going to a very appropriately named conference called Digital Dragon. I knew you uh, loved dragons. 
All right, man. Well, uh, yeah, good to catch up with you and enjoy enjoy whatever the hell that is. Yeah, me and my mate here, I'll tickle his chin. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, you've completely missed his chin there. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's it. Cool, man. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'll see you when you're back. All right, so The Witcher 3 came out this week. It's arguably the biggest game of the year so far. Sorry, Bloodborne. Anyway, even though some really, really horrible things happen to the people in the game world, it's surprisingly cheery. I thought that was kind of interesting, so I decided to check it out. Look, I know there's a lot of me in this episode. It's annoying for all of us, but just try and stay with me. I'll, I'll put on a different t-shirt. It'll be fun. Honest. Fantasy worlds can be pretty special. They capture the imagination by offering something simultaneously familiar and yet totally alien all at once. A world can be nostalgic or even historical feeling and yet be completely fantastical at the same time. With that in mind, it's no wonder so many fantasy worlds have become wildly popular, but oh my god, some of them are bleak. Take Game of Thrones, it's packed with noble lords and ladies living in luxury with servants and endless finery and wine positioned in every single room for crying out loud and they're all miserable. At the other end of the Westerosi spectrum are the common folk and they're all miserable because they have sod all and what little they do have is most likely going to be taken from them by some lordling or other who's probably going to do terrible things to them in the process. So mostly they're miserable because they weren't lucky enough to have George R.R. R. Martin write them in as one of the rich miserable people instead of one of the poor miserable people. Looking to video games, The Elder Scrolls is pretty bleak too. Skyrim's got a tedious civil war to deal with, there are dragons roaming the land attacking people at will, there's ice and snow everywhere, and so much sermonizing. Although it's undoubtedly beautiful, the only reason you're really enjoying yourself in Skyrim is because you're the one getting to sort everything out in exchange for loads of XP and a slap on the back. No NPC still standing at the end of an Elder Scrolls game is happy, they're just relieved they survived at all. That's honestly the best they can hope for. Now look at the open world in The Witcher 3. It's got loads more bad stuff going on than Skyrim. There are awful, horrible monsters everywhere, not just confined to dungeons or mines. A lot of its people are wrapped up in dire and complex situations where by trying to help may just easily get someone killed as it will fix their problem. These people have had their civil war, now they're trying to settle back into life under a new and brutal regime, navigating the same stresses and pitfalls they did earlier, only under twice as much pressure. And that's before you strike the rich seams of homophobia and racism that permeate the game world and make life hard for a number of its inhabitants. And I don't mean there are 20 different voice actors all saying Skyrim belongs to the Nords either. There's some really brutal stuff in this game. In my first few hours with The Witcher 3, I met a man who'd been forced into a life of exile solely for being gay. I heard a man try to justify burning down a dwarf's business because he hates non-humans. I saw a woman get assaulted in a bar simply because she was trying to return to something resembling a normal life in the wake of her town being taken by Nilfgaard's imperial forces. I witnessed cultural hatred between North and South and got called a monster and a freak more times than I can count. One of the loading screens casually refers to pogroms as one of the sad facts of the game's world, so you know they really aren't messing around, and yet the world somehow manages to be more vibrant, more cheerful, and more alive than any fantasy world I've seen. But how? Some of it is positioned as a conscious effort from the people inhabiting the world who are just trying to do the best they can in a sorry situation. The houses of even the most fearful are decorated with flowers and colourful paintings on the wall. The people you meet are empathetic, even while the worst is happening to them. For instance, a man asked me to rid a local well of a spirit so he could give fresh drinking water to his daughter and hopefully save her life, but he recognised Geralt probably wouldn't do it for free, that the world didn't stop turning simply because things had gone sour for him. These people acknowledge quite freely that your kindness, generosity, or hell, even your willingness to help them in exchange for coin is a rarity, but they're all the more glad for it. They even find room for humour, despite knowing they could easily die before the week is over. That's not to say everyone in the world is nice, there are some really, really creatively nasty people out there. I'll rip off your melon and shit down your neck! The Witcher 3 understands that when people are in a sorry situation, they still need escape and solace. Living through a tough time doesn't automatically mean you lose your sense of humour. By contrast, it makes Skyrim's inhabitants look, well, curmudgeonly. 
I mean, Skyrim is a wonderful game, but the people are all a bit one note. I hear there's a dragon in these parts. There's a rebellion happening. They say there's a mine not far from here with some cool stuff in it. Don't forget to check inside the shop if you need anything. All they really do is discuss what's bothering them or drop hints to you about what activities you can take up in the world. Almost nobody has time for a kind word. The Witcher 3 has characters who tell each other fun stories or talk about how the plums they ate earlier are raking havoc with their guts, even while there's a griffin on the loose killing anyone straying too far from home. The subtleties of the world aren't lost in the grand overtures of everything's a bit broken. It's a game that understands the little things count too even if the little things include discussing how likely you are to poo yourself later on. Almost it from us, Ian got his hands on Farming Simulator 2015 this week because, I don't know, I assume he hates himself. Anyway, here's how he got on with unfettered access to a load of heavy machinery. Ah, uh, my old enemy, Farming Simulator. Ooh, cocks. Yep, that's right, Farming Simulator 15 has just been released. Regular Eurogame viewers might remember I did a live stream of Farming Simulator 13, um, and I found the game incredibly boring, but had um, a huge amount of fun glitching the vehicles through the floor. No! Yes! What's happening? Uh, tractor. <sighs> this is pretty dull. This is probably about as exciting as the game gets. I'm not really sure real life farming is any more exciting, but luckily I know someone who was born on a farm that I can uh, I can ask. Hello Ian. Hello there Chris Bratt. I'm playing Farm Simulator 2015 and it's pretty boring. And right, okay. I've heard on the grapevine that you were born on a farm. Um, well, sort of. I mean like it was like a farm for horses, a horse farm. And do you have any horses? There are no horses in this game. Um, what, what I thought, like, that, I mean, you're, you're really out of my kind of territory there. Have you ever milked a cow? I haven't, um, but, uh, is that, is that, have you got some cows? cows no, there's no, there's, like there's no, I'm, I'm on a farm in America. Do, do they even have cows in America? I think they've got absolutely loads of cows, yeah. Uh, I thought so, it was mainly just bears in America. No, no, that's, uh, I think you might be thinking more Canada there, but I mean, mm. same. Okay. Continent. Have you played yeah. any of the other games? The the farming simulator games? No, I'm not actually into farming at all. I don't I find it, it's not really my kind of thing. More strategy games. So more. you were born in a barn? Yeah, and then I went inside and played video games oh. instead. Oh. Uh, huh. Oh. Oh. a lot, really. No, no problem, Ian. Good luck with the, with the grain business. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Alright, bye. 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 For someone who was born on a farm in a barn, he doesn't know anything about farming. It's kind of disappointing. Uh, so, Farming Sim 2015. Good if you like farming. Not good if you like anything other than farming. Um. Yeah, I think I'm going to bail on this one. <laughs> Alright, that's all we got time for for this week, but if you want to click those like and subscribe buttons, we'd be really grateful and you'd be richly rewarded. Not in any tangible or meaningful sense, but you'd at least know when we put up more video. So that's something.